Hey guys, welcome to my new office. We just moved in here. Now do you guys know I have two companies, right? I have my home building company I call Reisinger Build. And then I have my video production company which makes our YouTube videos and runs our buildshownetwork.com website. So we're co-located in one spot. Man, I am super excited about this space. It's been great for business, but for YouTube, check it out. I've got a studio space. My conference room just got the build logo recently. We need to upgrade our furniture, but we'll get there. I think I showed you this hidden door on a previous video. Delta Millworks uh, partnered with us on that. They got some sweet woods. This is my area for all my project managers. Uh, I got my guys back here. My office uh, is straight through that window. This is where all our accounting, accounts receivable, and that stuff happens back here. But this is the exciting part for YouTube. We've got two edit suites here. You guys have probably seen Joey before. Uh, Joey is normally behind the camera, but Alex, the new guy today, is filming. We've got two edit bays so we can edit videos. And then this is my brand new studio space. I've wanted to have a space like this for years that I could have set up with my desk. If you see my old videos at this desk, it was right in the middle where all my project managers were. And if I ever made a video like this, I always had to say, all right, guys, everyone be quiet. Put your phones on silent. But now I can come in here and make a video at any time. I'm really excited about it. Now, it's a little echoey in here now, just bare concrete floors and bare sheetrock. We're going to be outfitting this as a more of a true studio space where I can come and make videos. So stay tuned for that. But on today's video, I'm going to do something new, um, a little bit variety style. Uh, you know, my kids and I love to watch Dude Perfect on YouTube. They have their overtime. This is kind of my version of this. I don't know what to call this, but I want to review some new things and interesting things when it comes to building products, tools, that sort of thing. And that's what I've got here on the table today. Today's build show from the studio. Let's get going. All right guys, so what I've got here in these boxes are some interesting and new things in the building world. And I thought I'd kind of walk you through what I found, see if you think it's interesting as well. Um, these are my biggest boxes. I'll leave those for a little bit, but this is kind of cool. I got this from a builder friend in Washington, DC. I have no relation to this company, um, but he told me it was cool and I should check it out. So I looked at their website and said, that looks kind of interesting. Send me a sample. It is a stone facade for your building that's not actually real stone. And it actually, instead of getting mortared onto the building, goes onto the finish nail. Isn't that crazy? So this is real lightweight. I don't know what this weighs, but this is less than a pound. It looks like stone from the facade. When you get closer, though, you can tell it's not truly stone. They tell me that it's solid body colored all the way through. And they've got several different varieties and, and flavors. I was curious whether it was truly solid bodied, so I already started this cut. But as I cut through this with the saw, let's see if I can actually break it now. Oh gosh, it's harder than you think. There we go. You can tell it actually is solid bodied. I'm not sure what it's made from, but it looks like some type of a polymer, some type of a foam. I don't know what. They say it's patented. But the game changer on this is that it won't absorb any water and you can nail it onto your building. Now, uh, in this box here, they sent me actually some bigger samples. Oh, interesting. These are, these are like samples that you could actually use. So, I don't know, when you get up close, it's hard to tell it's not stone. And I would say from a distance, you'd have a really hard time knowing that's not stone. And this is the thing that I think is so wild in their literature. You know, they're using a, a pass load cordless finish nailer, putting a couple nails on this and boom, you're done. Totally mortarless, no lick and stick like the traditional stones. Pretty interesting. I'd like to test it. I've not uh, used it before. Like I said, I have no affiliation with the company, but pretty interesting concept. I would think if you were doing, let's say an inside fireplace or an inside stone wall, what a cool choice that your finish carpenter could actually do that for you. Okay, next up on the building products world, uh, you saw me use some products from this company, MortarNet. Uh, they have a brand new lath system that's made for uh, cultured stone or other types of products that are adhered to a building. 
that has a drainage plane kind of built into it. What I think is interesting about this is this is a really normal looking net lath. This is expanded wire lath, as they call it. And then this is kind of a Brillo pad material. But they tell me even with mortar crushing down on your boots, trying to pound it in, you can't fill this up and stop the drainage. So this is kind of cool. And you put it, it comes in, um, I think, three foot sheets maybe. So you shingle it. Let's see, how am I doing this? It must be shingled like this so that you are you always have that drainage plane as you uh, go down the building. Haven't used that before, but I thought that was kind of cool. They dropped that sample off to me. Now here's one that I think is really cool. I made a video with these guys about a year ago. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it on my uh, on the description below. This is called T-Stud. And this is a truss type stud. It actually has this in between these two outer studs. Now, when I made that video, uh, gosh, they had a ton of inquiries and I saw a house under construction with these. They've kind of uh, started manufacturing, they're not kind of, they have started manufacturing these themselves and they've changed the formulation so that you can actually get a bare version of this. I think it's called bare naked studs. So this is fitting in a, two, a standard two by six cavity, but you can see it's kind of a two by three. Let's actually uh, pull the tape out and see what size that is. If I can find my tape measure here. Uh, this is a inch and a half by two and a half. So a, a two by three, and you've got another two by three. Now you could put this face in or out. It doesn't really matter. And then they've got these hardwood dowels on here. And you can see that hardwood dowel goes all the way through and looks to be glued in with some kind of polyurethane glue. They've got a, they've got a little bit of a sanded spill out right there on the glue. So, you know, like a Gorilla Glue type. And that's, that hardwood dowel is going all the way through there. So that these are a one-to-one -one direct replacement uh, in terms of values for a 2x6 stud. But now you can break that thermal bridge. And when you insulate it with these, uh, I need to verify this, but I think they're around R19 at the stud location. Whereas a normal stud is around R1 per inch. So a two by six stud is gonna be maybe R5, R6, something like that. Pretty cool product. I'm actually hoping to build a house later this year with T-studs, but my understanding is these are in production and you can get these starting in July. So check their website for info on that. Now, another builder friend of mine saw a picture of my garage that I had on Instagram and said, hey, have you ever seen this? Check this out. This is a, I don't know, $20 or so kit. Uh, it's called Wire Hide. And your low voltage wires that are going to your door sensor are always jicky looking. You have a wire sticking through the drywall. Uh, you've got this teeny little low volt wire. These are a way to cover that up and make it look nice. It's about 20 bucks for a kit here. This is gonna do one standard garage door. There's nothing special. It's really just a wall outlet and some tubing. You probably could make it yourself, but to get that all in one kit, pretty sweet. I ordered two, I'm gonna upgrade my house. Uh, and I'm definitely gonna use this on new builds in the future. Okay, from the tool front, uh, my friends at Crescent sent me these. And actually, I don't think this is a new product, but I hardly see guys use it. And I, if you've not seen it, I really like this rapid slide. So check this out. Normally when you're adjusting these, there's a little screw up here and you're gonna adjust that screw and it's gonna move it. And it takes a while to go from full open to full close. This rapid slide. If you don't have one of these in your toolbox, highly recommend. Now this is a tool that I've not seen before. They call this a 10 inch locking adjustable wrench. It feels like a, oops, I'm going the wrong way. It feels like a, uh, a locking wrench but it's got a, a pair of jaws up here. So we can still adjust this with the screw, but then when we get close, we can cinch it down. And now we could probably, with one tool, replace uh, an entire socket set. Now, I don't know that you'd use this every day, but you know what this would be perfect for? And where I'm gonna keep this tool is I'm gonna keep this in my truck. Because now if I need a socket set at my job site, I'm not gonna keep a socket set in my truck, right? This would be perfect to keep in the back door, nice and small. I can use whatever I need and I can adjust it up from, uh, let's see, what's the size as it goes here from uh, zero to about an inch and a quarter size, something like that. And that last little adjustment there is really gonna lock it down. That's a cool tool, I like that. Okay, now from the overseas tools guys, Tajima. 
I have learned to become a big fan of Japanese tools. And this tape measure, it doesn't look like much, but I'll tell you, it is really cool. When you drop this thing on your tool belt, instead of the traditional slide clip that you're trying to slide over your belt, especially when I'm not wearing, I'm not usually wearing uh, a tool belt. What I'm wearing is a pair of jeans with a few things and I'm going between job sites. This is a way to keep that tape measure nice and secure on my belt. One click of the thumb, I can get it out. The other thing I like about it is when you extend it, the spring is like just right. It's not so strong that you feel like you're gonna hurt your finger if your finger got in the way. It's like just the right amount of spring. Like there was some Japanese engineer that spent a couple six months trying to figure out just the exact poundage on the string so that it wouldn't hurt you if it went back in. And it doesn't have the upturned leg on here, which I'm seeing more and more manufacturers doing and I don't like it because I've actually uh, got two scars on my knuckles from that upturned spring, uh, or pardon me, from that upturned leg right here at the end, nailing me on the knuckles as that thing forced itself back in. So, good job, Tadima. What else do I have in here? Last thing out of the bucket for today. Good friend of mine gave this to me for Christmas last year. This is a NOCO lithium ion battery booster. The idea is instead of jumper cables, this little tiny battery could actually jump your car, your truck, no problem. You're gonna plug in the, the standard cables right here on the end. These are gonna plug in right here. You're gonna turn this thing on. It has a little flashlight too if you need it. And then when you go to crank your car, it's gonna battery boost you exactly where you need to go. Very safe too. I got it for Christmas this past year and I thought, you know, I've already got jumper cables in my truck. I don't necessarily need this. What I should do is put it in my wife's minivan. Literally the next week, her friend in another minivan was dead at the school lot. She couldn't start it. My wife said, oh, my husband gave me this battery. And these two moms who are not particularly mechanical, pulled this thing out, dropped it on the batteries, and seconds later, the car was ready to go. That's pretty cool, I gotta say. They're a little pricey, uh, north of a hundred bucks, but I'll put a link to these guys. And it, I saw the other day, they actually sell them at Walmart. So you can get those all over the place. Okay, and the last thing for today, you know what an HVAC nerd I am. I saw this on Instagram. Uh, actually, a friend of mine said, hey, you should check these out. These are cool, and they sent me an Instagram link. This is a manufacturing company that I had not heard of before, Airx, and they make some really nice HVAC outlets. Ooh, they sent me several, thanks guys. Again, no affiliation. I don't know who these guys are. Uh, but I called them and said I'm interested in checking these out and they sent me a couple. So let's take a look at these. They call this the Titan outlet and they make these in a couple different sizes. But what I like about it is this is an actual nice outlet for the end, basically where your HVAC line set is coming out of the house. You can cover that. They make a stainless steel clamp here too you can cover that in a way that actually looks nice. Now, I think these are originally intended for retrofit. You've got kind of a gasket on here. You could screw it up tight. This isn't necessarily for putting on at the framing stage in new construction. It's really a retrofit, like I said. But if we coupled that with a flashing boot uh, from like the guys over at uh, Quick Flash, we could put a Quick Flash boot right at the wall. And then this could be our beauty cover on the outside. And then check this out. You always see houses that have their line sets looking bad. The sun degrades them. They look terrible. This is, this is their, I think we're kind of where they started on their, on their product line. What this does is this is going to cover our line set and our insulation, keep the UV rays off of it and make it look good. So we can cut that down to whatever size we want. Okay, so the line sets here, it's going to look like this. Then you're going to cover over it like this. There we go. Now we're correct. And then this hose clamp right here is going to clamp over this and hold all this together. And now this nice pretty vinyl cover is going to keep the sun off of your line set and your insulation. It's going to look nice, way better looking than a standard one. And they make it in a couple different sizes and colors too. I shouldn't say a couple, there's white and gray. 
So these two are white. Let's see, did they include a gray one as well? What else do we got here? No, nope, these, these are all white, different sizes of white, but you can see in the box here, uh, they make a gray cover as well. I think I might use this on my new real rebuild project. I hate seeing those ugly line sets and they always get UV damage and look bad over the years. All right, guys, that's it. That's new and interesting. This is the stuff I had kind of on my desk laying around uh, that I thought I'd bring out to you guys. I'll, put a, I'll try and put a link for everything uh, that I talked about in today's description. If you got something you think is new or interesting that I should know about, uh, shoot me an email. We've got a new email address. I'll link that right here. Uh, you can send me that. And if you've got a product that you want to send, I don't want a case of vinyl siding. I don't need products that uh, are going to layer onto my shop. But if you've got something you really think I would be interested in and I should know about, uh, here's my mailing address as well. So you can, you can drop me a line if you see something you think is really cool. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining me. Last thing, comment below if you've got a good name for this. I was kind of thinking, should I call this my punch list uh, or punch work? You know what punch work is, right? Uh, when I started 25 years ago, I was an assistant superintendent, and it was my job after a house was finished, after the superintendent walked it with the new homeowners, uh, to write down all the stuff that the homeowners had a problem with, and then make sure that was done. I either did it myself or I got a sub to do it, adjusting the doors and fixing this and touching up that, and then I got the homeowners to sign off on the punch list. I don't know, I thought that might be kind of a good name. If you got another good name for this segment though, shoot me a message uh, in the comments below. I'd like to know that. Guys, thanks for joining me. If you're not already a subscriber, new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Hopefully more content from the studio as well. It'll be fun to see this uh, continue to progress. Guys, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.